support. No, I so please. First pop analysis of the new decade, and it's not a Halsey song. Today we're gonna be looking at The Box by Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich. Roderick Moore Jr., aka Roddy Rich, is a rapper based out of Compton. Until recently, he really only had one pop hit to his name, that being. I ain't tryna die young, so I gotta ride with one. Stood ten toes down in my Balenciaga. Obviously, he has a lot more now, though, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about him. Background. The Box has only recently been released as a single from its associated album as of January 17th, 2020. Despite that, it actually charted back in December of 2019 at number 47. It gained a lot of popularity and hit number one near the middle of January, and it's still number one as of now. Oddly enough, The Box actually shares an orchestral sample with... <laughs> Both tracks use this sample, but Roddy Rich uses it throughout the entirety of his song, whereas Ciara just uses it in the very beginning. Where the stash at? Cruise the city in a bulletproof Cadillac. Cause I know these niggas out there where the- One, two, three. Go. Since it is a fairly generic orchestral sample, no one from Ciara's Love, Sex, and Magic is actually credited on Roddy Rich's The Box. But hey, if a lawsuit comes out about it, I'm sure they'll figure that out. As alluded to earlier, The Box is actually off of the album that you've been seeing in front of you. Please excuse me for being antisocial. The album was released at the beginning of December, and like I said, The Box was only recently made a single off of it. The first three singles being... Big stepper like Big Meat, mm-hmm. I was taught to go and get it straight about the mud, little nigga. Murder, murder. Got a bad bitch with me, she a Barbie. <laughs> you don't wanna start with me. Got some hood niggas posting in the jar. I have his nigga on back up. And bros gonna roll on the nigga, put the hoe down, hood on. As stated earlier, The Box was not a single when it charted. That actually happened to three other songs on this album. Those being... We go up for an hour, then we gon' move to the back seat. When you give me a lap dance, baby, watch for the gap. Shawty made that ass clap, she don't need no applause. High fashion, like go, y'all. Yeah. G-Wagon. As well as... I'm rocking friends on first. I'm probably beefing with Peter. I got a pair to leave him. The Box is actually only a two-person project, Roddy Rich having righty credits, and one Sam Glode, aka 30 Rock, having both writing and production credits. 30 Rock is actually a decently well-known producer and songwriter in the hip-hop scene, having some big hits under his belt as well, such as... I tell all my hoes, break it up, break it down, back it up. Or more recently... The Box is released solely by Atlantic Records. Form. The Box is a hip hop song, is about 3 minutes 16 seconds long, 4 4 time, B flat minor, and as far as DJs are concerned, 117 beats per minute. After the short intro, which we heard at the beginning of this video, we get the first chorus. Pulling out the coupe at the lot, tone for a 12 fuck swat, buzzing all the bells out the box, I just hit a lick with the box. Followed by the first verse. I was at bat, where the stash at? Cruise the city in a bulletproof Cadillac. Then the second chorus. Pour up the whole damn seal, I'ma get lazy. The second verse. The pilot I'm flying in, I never wanna fly again. I take my chances in traffic. Yeah. And the third chorus. Turn on wipe a nigga, no. Say slash slash. Given there's also a lovely little outro that actually has a key change in it, but we'll get to that later. Orchestral Sample. I haven't had to do one of these yet, so obviously as the name implies, this is a sample of an actual orchestra, which is like 50, 60, 70 different instruments, and I'm not gonna sit here trying to chart out each one. So what you see in front of you is a simplistic reduction of what's happening, which is essentially a run up from B flat to a full B flat minor chord throughout the rest of the orchestra. Vocals. By comparison, this is extremely simplistic. It's just going back and forth between D flat and C. On beat four, it hits that D flat before going to beat one of the next bar and hitting a C below it. 
chords. Now we actually have some formal harmony. The opening chord is a B flat minor over F chord, which holds for two bars before going to a root position E flat minor and then a root position A flat major. And it just repeats that ad nauseum. <laughs> Horn. I say horn, but it's really more of a horn synth and kind of complements the chords quite nicely. It starts off on that low B flat before jumping up to that F, which it holds across beats 3 4 of one bar and 1 2 of another before dropping to C, going up to E flat for an entire bar, and then dropping to D flat and finally C. <laughs> Bass. The first bass figure we have opens up with a B flat. The very next bar, it fades in a D flat before dropping back down to the B flat. It then goes one lower to the A flat, jumps all the way up to the G flat above it before dropping to the D flat, and then finally the A flat at the end of the figure. <laughs> The second bass figure repeats that for the most part, except in the last two bars it chooses to stay on that E flat for beats one and four before going up to D flat, but then dropping down again to the A flat. Outro. And then we get this nonsense. This is actually a bunch of synths. Some of them actually sound like strings, but trust me, they are all synthesized. The chords you see above them are kind of just giving a framework for what these strings are actually doing, even though some of the chords are not even fully spelled out. <laughs> And this is where that key change is, given it's not exactly a key change. Regardless, notice how it switches from a G flat chord to an F sharp chord, despite the fact that G flat and F sharp are technically the same note. But we can interpret that last chord, that B7, as tonicizing E, if the song were to continue anyway. <laughs> Not often you get a rushed mini music theory lecture and a rap song, huh? Chorus. The chorus opens relatively simple, focusing melodically mostly around that B flat, never really getting beyond a third from it. The rhythms are mostly just 16th notes and 8th notes in varying combinations. Put it out the coop at the lot, turn for a 12 for a swat, buzzing all the bells out the box. I just hit a lick with the box, had to put the stick in the box. As the chorus goes on, it does get a bit more spaced out rhythmically, not doing nearly as many 16th notes, and even having some melismatic singing within the rapping. Pour up the whole damn seal, I'ma get lazy. I got the mojo deals, we been trapping like the 80s. Then simplifies it even further, holding notes longer than a half note and choosing more to focus on eighth notes entirely. She said the nigga so got a cash out. Told him wipe a nigga no. He then repeats that same idea, given now he's added in more melismatic singing. I won't never sell my soul, and I can beg that, and I really wanna know. Verse. The first verse starts off a bit more spaced out than the chorus. The rest's in between the figures as opposed to just at the end of them. I was at bat, where the stash at? Cruise the city in a bulletproof Cadillac. Cause I know these niggas have to wear the bag at. Gotta move smarter, gotta move harder. We then get some more rhythmic variants, and this is actually the only instance in the entire song where any triplet figure presents itself. Nigga try to give me five my water. I lay his ass down on my son, on my daughter. I had the Draco with me, Dwayne Carter. A lot of niggas out here playing ain't ballin'. Moving on his rhythms become a bit more relentless and throws some awfully high notes in the middle of them. We then get the most spaced out lyrics before ending it with more 16th and 8th note rhythms, given there's one dotted 8th note near the end. The second verse actually starts out fairly closely to the chorus, a focus on 16th and 8th note rhythms, at least until we get to the end where he's doing just 8th notes much higher in his register and pretty much shouting. <laughs> I've been moving them out, and steal it with me, then he got the blues in the pouch. Took it to the forest, put the wood in the mouth. Bitch, don't wear no shoes in my house. We then get some quick rapid fire before he slows down, going back to those 8th and 16th note rhythms that he's been doing for the majority of the song. The private I'm flying in, I never wanna fly again. I take my chances in traffic. She's sucking on dick. 
shaking on hands with it. I just made it roll it plain like a London strip. Despite the fact that a lot of these rhythms that we've been seeing have been done in the chorus, with a few exceptions, he does vary the notes he's rapping more melodically to make them a bit more intriguing than those that we hear in the chorus. I'm a 2020 president candidate. I'd have put a hundred bands on Zimmerman shit. I've been moving real gangster, so that's why she pick a crit. Shotty call me Chris Cole, cause I pop my shit. The second verse ends with all of the stuff that made the verses interesting. These varied rhythms, these spaced out rhythms, and he even throws a melisma on drugs. Got it out the mud. There's nothing you can tell me. Yeah, when I had a job, South Street wealthy. Yeah. This song caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting a non-album single at the time to get to number one, let alone stay at number one for as long as it did. That's not saying it's a bad song. I actually was very intrigued by Roddy Rich's flow, and I was fascinated at the amount of rhythmic diversity that he had in his bars. And he even threw melismas not only in the chorus, but in the verse as well, like that one melisma on but for real though, I did not think this was going to be number one this week. I thought that Future and Drake track would oust it. That or something off of Eminem's new album would debut at number one. But Life Is Good stayed at number two, and Godzilla debuted at number three. So shouts to Roddy Rich. Oh, got cash out. Turn on wipe 